You guys and girls are always asking me, Raj, do I need to learn coding to become a solutions architect? What kind of coding do I need to learn? How much coding do you do as part of being an SA, etc.? So I decided I'm actually doing a project uh, for my job, which requires some coding. So today in this video, I'm going to go over that actual example with what kind of coding, how much coding, at what depth. That would be a very practical example. Uh, for those of you who are uh, new to this channel, my name is Raj. I'm a senior solutions architect for serverless and containers at AWS. I'm also a best-selling Udemy and Pluralsight author, public speaker, and tech advisor. So I'm working in AWS for over three and a half years now. Whatever I share is from the actual experience. So I'm definitely in the field, in the trenches. So all right, with that, uh, let's get started. So this is the official uh, serverless samples under AWS's official repo. So you could see AWS samples, serverless samples. So my project is basically create a sample for a very secure end-to-end -end API gateway pattern. So what I need to do is, first I need to fork this repository. So I fork this repository under my GitHub repository. So you could see Saha Rajdeep fork from uh, AWS samples. So first thing you need to learn is Git and GitHub. So you need to be comfortable how to fork, how to do change, how to push your changes, etc. And next thing is the actual architecture. Uh, so let's go over it real quick and then we are going to talk about the coding part. So I'm going to make myself smaller. All right, so this is my repository. So if I scroll down, uh, so I added this Fargate private API section. Uh, this private API example using API Gateway REST APIs utilizes private API and private integration along with Amazon Cognito as the identity provider. Uh, so this pattern will be beneficial for high security customers such as public sector, financial, etc. Uh, so if I click this readme, so I created uh, this part. Uh, let's go over the architecture, then I'll go over the coding. Uh, so this is the architecture. Uh, so basically you have an Amazon API gateway with a private API. So private API means that the API can only be invoked from uh, VPCs or peered VPC or uh, from on-prem if you have direct connected to the VPC. And the back end of the API is also private integration. That means no traffic goes out of uh, AWS's network. Uh, so to do that, you need to create a private link. So this is AWS private link. Uh, private link ends in a network load balancer. And then this network load balancer is sending the traffic to AWS Fargate, so which is running some container. And all the container is hosted in Amazon ECR. And then I'm using DynamoDB for the backend database. There are a lot of blog posts and codes for API available, but most of them do not go beyond the first step of implementing business logic and access control generally. Uh, they do using console or they do some kind of hello world kind of thing. Uh, so this example that I am doing, I wanted to do the full CI CD pipeline and the dashboard as well as uh, working code, authentication, authorization using uh, Cognito. So of course, the very first kind of coding you need to know is infrastructure as code. So since I need to provision all this stuff, API Gateway API, AWS Lambda Authorizer, Fargate, DynamoDB, etc., I need to know at least one infrastructure as code. Now I know CloudFormation, I know Terraform, but I'm not as good in Terraform as I am in CloudFormation. So if I switch to my IDE, so I was using Cloud9 for this. Uh, so I had to do a lot of changes in this template.yaml file, which is basically the CloudFormation, and then the pipeline.yaml. So this pipeline.yaml um, defines the DevOps pipeline and the template.yaml actually spins up the infrastructure. Uh, so which brings me to the second part of the coding is pipeline as code. Uh, so for this example, let me zoom out a little bit. Uh, for this example, I am using AWS code pipeline for the DevOps pipeline. So you could say I'm using code commit and then I'm building. Uh, so basically I'm grabbing the Docker file, creating the containers, and then I am actually doing the integration testing. I am spinning up AWS code build, running some uh, integration test. And if everything passes successfully, I am defining the infrastructure in production. So basically there is a manual approval state 
And then I'm creating the Cognito, I'm creating the application chain set and creating the application. So if I go to CloudFormation, so you could see all this stuff, Fargate, private API, CI, CD production, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, up to this one, this up to VPC testing. So all this I needed to create, right? So, and generally you are not gonna create everything from scratch. Uh, so for this example, I took the base application, but then I needed to add the components uh, for the private API. Here I'm showing a uh, code pipeline, but if you know Jenkins file, Jenkins, that is totally fine as well. All right, so now let's talk about application coding. Uh, so this is what you folks are probably most intimidated about. So by application coding, I mean these backend uh, Fargates, so locations, resources, and bookings for these three different uh, microservices. Uh, so two things. So let me go to the actual code. So if I go to source API, let's say this locations API, which, grab, which gets a location and then saves it in DynamoDB, and the code is in handlers.js.javascript. Uh, so if I scroll down, not many, 71 lines of code, and you can always Google. So basically, um, as long as you understand at least one language and you don't even have to know the detail level, like no one cares if you understand like classes, uh, recursion, all that stuff. Because when you create a sample application for quick starts or for your customers, no one is trying to test how good you are in data structure, algorithm, and all these fancy coding things. Only thing you need to know is how to use AWS services in the code. That's it. So for this case, you see there is a lot of repetition. So basically get location, update or insert location. So all this code is doing is getting the location as an input and saving it in a DynamoDB. So that's all you need to do. One thing I like about AWS is it has plenty of examples available, right? So as long as you know that part, either with JavaScript or Java, or Python, or Go, or any of the modern languages, you are good. So for this part, again, this example is the extreme, right? This is very mature. You are not going to start with examples like this. Uh, but going one level further, for the coding part, let's say you coded something simple, you put it end to end, there is no Fargate, you run it as a Lambda, that's great. So now going a little beyond. So I'm going end to end spectrum here. So all this Fargate is obviously running containers. Uh, so for this case, you need to know containerization. So this is not a Kubernetes example. This is running ECS. Why ECS? I wanted this to run in public sector customers and a lot of public sector customers, which is government customers, need FedRAM high compliance. And ECS Fargate is FedRAM high, but EKS Fargate is not FedRAM high yet. Uh, so that's why I used ECS Fargate. But the same example will work with EKS as well because you can expose EKS Fargate with Network Load Balancer. But anyway, um, going back to the code part, so I needed to know this Docker file, but again, the Docker file part is easy because it's already taking the code that's already there and then it's Dockerizing that application, right? So uh, if you need to do some sample where you need to show some container application, then you of course need to know uh, containerization. So another thing which is important beyond just knowing the coding infrastructure as code, pipeline as code, et cetera, is the actual development life cycle. So you need to know at least one IDE. Um, so as you could see, I did some work in Cloud9, uh, but then I also did some work in the Visual Studio code. So as long as you know one IDE, it doesn't matter whether local or running in Cloud9, don't matter. So I did, I changed a lot of stuff in my Visual Studio code, but then with Cloud9, it's a little easier to test because it's running on EC2. A lot of things pre-installed. Uh, so that you need to know, and of course you need to know some Linux command. You need to know the curl, like the JQ command, uh, AWS CloudFormation, CLI commands, uh, because I needed to write the documentation. So if I go back to my uh, folder, uh, so I had to write this readme file along with the commands. And again, there are a bunch of examples. So it's not that I needed to know everything. As long as I know, okay, I need to run CloudFormation, so I need to know AWS CloudFormation commands. And beyond that, you also need a little bit of hands-on knowledge for the actual AWS services. 
Like you need to know how to navigate to the service, how to check if there is an error. So let's say Amazon API Gateway. So if I go to API Gateway, you could see I just ran it today and that stack created these two API, one for testing, one for production. The endpoint type is uh, private. And then I need to know like how to go to this uh, cloud formation, if there is an error, how to check the error and all that stuff, right? But that's beyond your traditional coding. That's more on the developer life cycle. So, all right, so to summarize the coding components that a solutions architect should know are number one, infrastructure as code, where we define all these components that I went through. You could learn CloudFormation or Terraform, either is fine. Uh, second is pipeline as code. So basically you have to know how to create a DevOps pipeline using some template. For this, I used code pipeline. So basically I used uh, build spec files. If you know Jenkins file, Jenkins, that's totally fine. Number three, is the actual application code. You do not need to know data structure, algorithm, even advanced coding. Only thing you need to know is how to use AWS services in a code and you can pick a programming language of your choice. So basically I like Python. I have done a lot of development work in Python, so I like Python, but I know a little bit of JavaScript as well. Uh, but you can choose between uh, Python, JavaScript, Go, Java, Rust, etc. Uh, don't choose like COBOL or something, right? Uh, choose one of the modern languages. And the next thing you need to know, this is a little bit advanced. Uh, all the essays are expected to learn a little bit of containerization these days because container containers are so hot. Uh, so you should at least know the flow, at least the Docker file, at least how to Dockerize uh, the application. And I have a bunch of videos on it, so check it out if you're interested. And then I like eCase because Kubernetes, again, super hot. So if you know Kubernetes, it's much easier to get a cloud DevOps job these days. And beyond that, you should know the software development lifecycle, one of the IDEs, as well as Git, GitHub, and Linux. Uh, so basically, uh, Git, GitHub is pretty straightforward. Uh, how to fork a repository, how to pull, how to create a branch, etc. I have a separate Git tutorial. Uh, check it out if interested. And some basic Linux commands. Nothing is rocket science. You don't need to remember all this stuff. For example, I am creating this sample, but I am referring and Googling bunch of stuff, right? So I have a bunch of other stuff often. As you could see, I am going and checking my previous stuff, the CloudFormation demo, how I did the pipeline, and then I'm just copy pasting stuff, right? And then I'm testing it out. Okay, and the final thing is, uh, so actually I have been working on this for last two weeks. Uh, so this is all running, everything looking good. So only thing that's left is, I will create a pull request to merge this to the official AWS sample. Let me know in the comment section if you want me to go over this particular sample in detail along with the architecture as well as the hands-on part along with the code pipeline part. Uh, happy to do that, not a problem. Yeah, so I thought it will be good if I actually show you an actual example and not just theory crafting what a, a coding example looks like for an actual solutions architect. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, click the like button, smash it. If that's something you are into, subscribe to this channel. It really helps the channel grow and motivate me to do more content like this. All right, folks, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.